Hi friends, it's Monica and let's talk about Dark Academia. So today's video, I'm going to be reviewing seven Dark Academia books that I have recently read in the past couple months and I just wanted to make a full genre video about Dark Academia because this genre is quite interesting. It's a mix of mystery, scholar work, as well as most likely taking place at a university campus or college campus. Usually there is a murder involved and secret societies and a lot of philosophizing. By the end of this video, you'll see that I have a very particular taste in dark academia. These books are in no particular order and let's just get right to the first one, which is Ace of Spades by Ferda Ibikidiime. This one, I rated it a 4 out of 5 stars. And this one is a YA mystery thriller set in a dark academia setting. This book takes place in a private academy and we're following the two top black students in the school and their names are Chiamaka and Devon. But once a mysterious figure that goes by the name of Aces shares the deepest darkest secrets of these two students to the entire school, the futures that our characters have worked so hard for is in jeopardy. Aces is also only targeting the two black students in the school and at first Devon and Chimaka are like it's not about our skin color but then they quickly find out it is and we do see how they very much stand up for themselves and fight very much against their bullies. This book does take on that dark academia setting because we're at a private academy but it's tackling important issues such as racism, bullying, homophobia, and white supremacy. There is also the layer added of having someone watch and stalk our characters and that adds a very nice layer of tension to this atmosphere in the book. And I do love having two very strong protagonists and despite their flaws, they still gain the courage to stand up towards their bullies. This is definitely a book that you want to pick up if you want an intense mystery with important underlying messages. Next up is Legendborn by Tracy Zeon. I rate this one a 5 out of 5 stars. I've been talking about Legendborn so much on my channel, but I can't help but share my love for it. This one takes more of a YA fantasy twist on the dark academia setting. This one, we're following Brie Matthews, who is attending an early college program at the University of North Carolina. And on her first night on campus, she notices a magical flying demon attack. And she quickly finds out that there is a secret society comprised of students called Legendborn who fight back against these demons and monsters. And for personal reasons, Brie joins this secret society. I also do have a reading vlog for this book and if you're interested in that, I'll link that down below. This one is really a perfect blend of the fantastical elements along with the dark academia setting. And we also have exploration of themes of racism, discrimination, colonialism, and Tracy Dion does an amazing job at blending all of these things together into a very exciting and addictive book. The magic system in this book is not super complex to understand and it is based on the legend of King Arthur and his Knights of the Round Table. As I mentioned before, we do have that dark academia setting. We have many demons running around. We have that supernatural element set on a university campus. And we also have secret societies and a possible murder mystery going on. But the strong point for this book were the characters for me, especially our main character Brie. She is the definition of black girl magic. She is very strong, defiant, and willing to put up a fight for what she believes in. And there's a really personal exploration of Brie's grief and is very raw and real. Some other characters I really loved in Legendborn were Nick, Cell, and William. They're all fantastic. I do think Legendborn is more of a dark academia book that I would typically go for because there is the fantastical elements that I love. Again, the author did such a great job at interweaving all of those underlying messages and it's just very well done. And I also love the sequel Bloodmarked. Next up, we have Ninth House by Leigh Bardugo, and I rated this one a 4.5 out of 5 stars. I also recently uploaded a reading log for Ninth House. Again, if you're interested in that, I'll link that down below. This one is an adult fantasy, but has very dark occult themes with sacrifice, hell, and demons. 
We're following Alex Stern, who comes from a very difficult past, and she is offered a chance from Yale University to watch over their secret societies and oversee their dark rituals and protect the people from so-called dark forces. And why they picked Alex is because of her unique ability to see ghosts. And straight away, going into Ninth House, I would say this one is very, very dark, very occulty. And there can be some triggering content in this book, so look those up before diving into this one if you're curious. I really enjoyed learning about the dark side and the occulty side of the secret societies in Yale. It really takes on a different perspective compared to like the YA dark academia books I just mentioned. We learn very quickly that when using magic in this world, there are very severe consequences and that you may be very severely affected by misusing magic. Within this world, we have Alex who is our protagonist and she is very, very headstrong and very determined to achieve her goals and also very protective of her friends. We also have Dawes who is like a protective mother hen and she's the scholar in this book. We also have Detective Turner who is very reluctant to even be involved with the occulty side of Yale. And of course, we have Darlington, who is known as the Gentleman of Leafy, and he is not your typical wealthy upperclassman. I really think that Lee Bardugo really did take the dark academia elements and wove it into a dark, atmospheric, creepy, occulty tale, and I think it's very well done in Ninth House. Next, I read Babel by R.F. Kuang, and I rated this one a 4 out of 5 stars. For this one, I would describe it more as a historical fiction that has fantastical elements and it's set place in a dark academia setting. A quick summary of what Babel is about. In this world, there is power in translations and with words being lost in translation, there's magic to be found there. And in this world, they can craft that magic into silver bars. We're following Robin who is a Chinese orphan and is being raised by a mysterious professor to be very proficient in languages and in order to attend Oxford University's most prestigious institute of translation, Babel. However, Britain is also wanting to start a war with China over opium and silver. Babel really is an intense book that would take you on a journey of fight, humanity, and heartbreak in 1830s England. We follow Robin from his youth until his years at Oxford and we quickly see how Robin forms a very close-knit friendship with his cohort. We also see how Robin joins a student resistance and the outcome of that. However, I think the main themes in this book is to see how Robin experiences racism, discrimination, as well as the after effects of colonialism. And I feel like this part of the book was very much in your face. It felt like you were being spoon-fed at times, although R.F. Kuang does a wonderful job at representing POCs in a time where POCs were being treated horribly. My other issue with this book was that it read very much as a textbook with endless lectures on philosophy and linguistics, which I found interesting at times, but it was too much like a textbook. And I don't really want that in a novel because I want to be immersed into the world and I did have some difficulty with Babel in that immersion. Although the themes are the main focus point in Babel, I do think that the dark academia setting was very much dark academia. <laughs> then I picked up The Atlas 6 by Olivia Blake and I rated this one a 3.5 out of 5 stars. In this one, we're following a group of six insufferable young adults who are competing to join the society. And when they join the society, they could gain access to the Alexandrian Library archives. That basically means that you will be guaranteed a life of power and privilege. But the catch here is that initiation will only see to that five candidates pass and that one is eliminated. With the Atlas 6, I do have a reading log as well. If you're interested in that, I'll link that down below for your enjoyment. I was quite nicely surprised by the Atlas 6 because I keep on hearing that all the characters are very much unlikable and they're right and I loved every second of it. I really enjoyed figuring out why these characters will go into such lengths to join the society and figuring out these characters' background, their motivations and goals. However, the world building was somewhat weak but I did really like the relentless pursuit of knowledge, and seeing how far these characters will go to achieve their desires. 
the Atlas Six is very much dark academia and it does really dig deep into very flawed characters. The next dark academia book I picked up was A Lessons in Vengeance by Victoria Lee. I rated this one a 2.5 out of 5 stars. We're following Felicity Morrow who's returning to Dalloway School after the death of her girlfriend and she's returning to graduate from the school that has rumors of witchcraft and murder mysteries. There's also the arrival of a new first year, Ellis, and she's a 17 year old progeny novelist. Felicity feels very drawn to her and Ellis asks for Felicity's help in doing a research project on the school's past murders. She agrees and history has a way of repeating itself. For this book, I did want to like it a lot more than I actually did. <laughs> It has the elements of a boarding school, a murder mystery, questionable narrators, which I all love, but I think something wasn't clicking for me in this book. There was a lot of emphasis on spoiled kids, which is sometimes a really common theme in dark academia. There was a lot of method writing and a lot of philosophy talk, but I feel like this philosophy talk was one that I wasn't very attuned to. I think it was the writing, but also the main weak point were the characters, but I will get to that. The beginning of the book was slow for me, but there are winning parts with sapphic relationships and openly talking about mental health and therapy. There were mentions of witches, magic, and haunting spirits, which really does fit into the atmosphere of a boarding school located in the mountains. And going on to the characters, I really did not like the characters with Felicity and Ellis being our main ones. Their romance was very felt obsessive like right off the bat and it didn't feel like it flowed naturally between them. And the characters themselves really came off as shallow and entitled but somehow they're very unique and they draw people in. I think it just felt flat for me like I didn't really connect with the characters. For this Dark Academia book, I was expecting it to be fun, but it turned out to be a little bit lackluster. Next up, we have Truly Devious by Maureen Johnson. I rated this one a 4 out of 5 stars. Truly Devious is set in the mountains of Vermont at a private academy, Ellington Academy, for the best and brightest. There are two mysteries that are set on parallel timelines. First, we have the early 20th century murders above the founders daughter and wife being kidnapped and killed. And then we also have a current day murder mystery at the academy. With both of these timelines and mysteries, we do have mysterious letters popping up describing ways of murder through riddles, and it's signed by Truly Devious. At the center of trying to solve the cold case and the new murder mystery, we have Stevie Bell, our protagonist. Stevie is socially awkward. She's a very intelligent person. She has that Sherlock Holmes type of personality, and she's a true crime junkie. The author did a very good job at representing anxiety and panic attacks within Stevie's internal thoughts, which I thought was quite accurate. But Stevie did come off as nosy as trying to be a amateur detective, and she was doing a lot of actions that may have come off as intelligent to her, but it was really disrespectful in some regards. And I really didn't like the exploration of the consequences of crime, such as emotional trauma, people getting hurt, and Stevie isolating herself. Unfortunately, with this series, I'm not going to be continuing with it because with this sequel, The Vanishing Steer, I actually ended up DNFing it. The reason for this was because I wanted more answers for the overarching mystery that's going to be stretched out over four books. And I felt like I was just getting disinterested. I think I'm fine with not finding out what actually happened. So I ended up DNFing the sequel to this book, but I loved Truly Devious book one. And um, I have a special mention of a book that I did not end up finishing. This is The Secret History by Donna Tartt. I know this one can be described as like a classic dark academia book by people. This book follows a formula of a dark academia book, which is you have a group of eccentric college students located on a remote university campus, and we have a classics professor, there's a thriller aspect, murder mystery, a lot of philosophizing. For this one, I read up to 50 pages in, and if you do have like, the paperback version of a secret history book, like the text is really small, so I feel like I gave it a enough chance that I just felt disconnected from the characters 
I feel like there was nothing going on within the plot. I think at that point in time, I was very tired of reading about insufferable characters because I was reading back to back acad dark academia books. And I think maybe in the far, far off future, I will give The Secret History another chance. But for now, I did end up DNFing it. In conclusion, I'm going to decide that dark academia as a genre is a love hate relationship for me. I only like certain ones that have a blend of fantasy in there because fantasy is my favorite genre so I really do like to seek books that do have those type of elements. I do think I will still continue to pick up Dark Academia books but I will be a little bit more selective or try to pick the ones that I think I will love. And with that, I do want to ask if you do have any more recommendations for me of any Dark Academia books I should check out, list them in the comments down below. That's all I want to say today in this video. I hope you all had a wonderful day and don't forget to give me a huge thumbs up and that subscribe button down below and don't forget to ring the notification bell to not miss my future uploads. And I will see you all in my next one.